And every Monday we get John Moses up out of bed and we make him work on his off day. That's the way we do things around here. Our conversation with the Altoona Curve broadcaster brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. You must despise about the 9 o'clock hour on Monday mornings, huh? Uh, I don't think I despise it. I think it's uh, an <laughs> hour that uh, <laughs> has been uh, – I think it's an hour that uh, – is, is usually well spent in bed after a, a long week. But <laughs> such is life. It's uh, all good. Well, indeed it is. I could switch your day and make it on Tuesday before the game, but I have too much fun bothering you on Monday. Uh, so let's talk about this uh, this past week in Akron. I'm guessing uh, that with a few challenges this week, uh, Kerr players probably learned a little bit about themselves and about the game of baseball, huh? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, this is – this is the nature of the season, right? Like we are now at the 40 game mark where players are starting to learn how to adjust back to each other. Um, you know, it's no longer just the daily rhythms and being back into it and knocking off the rust after having the year off. Um, now it's really adjusting back to your competition as they adjust to you. Um, and uh, this week was really entertaining and eerie. You know, we played six games in a row, all decided by two runs or less. So, you know, that's what happens when you have two good teams that play each other every day. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, there was some hitting going on this series, and Castro doesn't cool off at all. Castro is just on fire. Oh, yeah. I mean, he hit three home runs this week. The curve hit four home runs on Thursday night. Uh, Castro and Martin hitting back-to-back home runs in the first inning of the game. Um, you know, Castro's just been really impressive. Um, he's been able to continue to hit for average while hitting for – you know, an immense amount of power as well, which is not something you'd expect when you when you see him. But uh, just a really, just turning into a really nice young player and somebody that I think has a bright future. Yeah, that's one of the, I can't remember which game it was. Uh, there were a couple of slugfests in that series. Uh, and there was one game where it came in, um, I think he was four for five. A couple of guys were three for five. And uh, Martin was three for four with, with a game-winning home run. He had two dingers that night. Uh, uh, the sticks have been going well for the curve batters heated up pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, you know, this week, I think the familiarity of playing against a pitching staff that they have seen once already this year, um, may have sort of played into that. Um, but you know, just every, you know, almost every day in the series, they had eight or more hits. Um, you know, they had 16, I think it was Thursday night. Um, you know, every guy in the lineup seems to be, seems to be hitting their stride at the same time. And, you know, that's going to be pretty scary for uh, for Harrisburg as they come in this week if you've got seven or eight guys swinging it the way that Altoona has last week. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting to me as well to look at, because of these six-game series, most of the teams, in fact, I think all of them, they're going with six-man rotations. Uh, and so uh, there's a little extra time between starts uh, for these Pirates minor leaguers, um, the starters anyway. And and I'm guessing for the Pirates, they're more than all right with that. That's exactly what they would like as these guys uh, get into the rigors of a season. The season goes on. Those innings can pile up, and they don't necessarily want the guys to throw tons of innings in a game. Yeah, um, I, I think that's true. You know, the Pirates, I think, welcomes the chance to have six-game series because they had, you know, probably six or seven guys at each level of their minor league system that they wanted to still use as a starting pitcher. Um, you know, it's funny, I was talking to Jeff Passantino, who, you know, has normally pitched on Sundays for us this season. And, you know, he was saying that every season since he is 18 years old, that by the time he hits the 40 inning mark or 30 inning mark pitching in his season, you know, he feels something in his arm, whether it's, you know, a little soreness in his elbow or in his shoulder. And he's, you know, he sort of understood that now at 25 years of age, he just sort of has to push through that point, and then if he makes it through, then he's good for the rest of the season. And, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if everybody's now just starting to feel the normal soreness that comes from getting to the 40-inning mark of the season and then the 40-game mark overall. So, um, yeah, you know, we've been fortunate to have healthy and good starting pitching so far this year. And, I mean, golly, we're excited to see Veronica Contreras again tomorrow. 
Yeah, that's the thing. Every series starts with Rowancy on the mound. That's a pretty good way to get off to a good start in a series. Uh, and, and Harrisburg has seen him once already, so we can expect the Senators going to try to make an adjustment or two on Rowancy Contreras. But, uh, yeah, it's it's like Tuesday's my day. I'm going to be pitching today. Wednesday's my day, and, 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 and on and on through the rotation. Guys in the bullpen, maybe not so much. They're going to have to be ready on an everyday basis. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, you know, I think the nature of having 28 on the active roster instead of 25, like we've had in past seasons, has sort of a, has sort of allowed the bullpen to be a little bit deeper. Um, you know, we've carried uh, eight relief pitchers, and, you know, for those guys to sort of rotate through, I mean, they've sort of developed a little rhythm of their own where, you know, there's Christopher Melendez and Hunter Stratton who are pretty much soaking up the ninth inning when there's a save opportunity. Um, and then just about everybody else is on a rotation about every two or three days they get a chance to pitch um, based on how the situation shakes out. Um, but, you know, looking forward to seeing Rwanzi again tomorrow. He's uh, he struck out 10 or more batters three times this season, and that doesn't happen very often in Altoona Curve history. Um, wow. The next time he does it, it'll be the franchise record for most 10 strikeout games by one pitcher in the same season. Um, the only guy who's done that before is Ian Snell back in 2004 when he pitched for Altoona. Um, so Contreras is going to write his name all over the record books if he, the longer he stays with the curve. John Moses, our guest this morning here on Indiana in the morning. I want to raise a couple of names uh, for you because you get to see these guys every day. And uh, these are names that we haven't heard as much as some of the more celebrated names uh, like O'Neill Cruz and, and Rodolfo Castro. But, uh, uh, a couple of fellas uh, that we want to highlight this morning, and uh, forgive me if I mess their names up, Kanan Smith and Jigba uh, and Cal Mitchell. It's a couple of guys uh, that uh, they can rake it a little bit too. Yeah, Kanan Smith and Jigba had like an eight-game stretch where he was 0 for 23, and he caught me one day where you know we happened to cross paths at batting practice, and he was like, listen, uh, you, only, you only go 0 for 23 if you play the game as long as I have which I thought was a remarkable perspective for a 22-year-old outfielder. Um, and I, I think he's he probably has the best plate discipline of any player on the team. Um, you know, he's got a great idea of the strike zone. And this week, it, it just sort of clicked for him again. Um, you know, four hits again in the loss on Sunday. Um, you know, batting nearly 400 during a 12-game on base streak here. Um, he's just been really solid and, and brings a great perspective to this team. And, you know, Cal Mitchell has been really underappreciated also. He's just been solid all year. He doesn't strike out very much. Um, he's, he's starting to see more power come into his game. Um, you know, hit his fourth home run on Thursday night. Um, and he's just been solid every day and, you know, consistently gives the team a, a good at bat and, you know, now he's starting to see more of those uh, more of those line drives fall in, and uh, that's why you see the batting average tick up for Mitchell. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so uh, a couple of moments left here with John Moses from the Altoona Curve, and then he gets to go back to bed and, and finish him with the dishes, the breakfast dishes as well. Um, uh, it's it's kind of fishy in Altoona this week, huh? You've got some, some neat little promotions going on. Yeah, this weekend we're going to rebrand as the Altoona Brookies. Um, we've got these awesome specialty uniforms that they're going to wear all three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and then there's going to be a live auction on Sunday during the game where you can buy these jerseys and get them signed afterward. Um, you know, normally we're, we're able to do these, uh, these jersey auctions and then, you know, players really give it to you on the field that, you know, that's not going to be how it works out this year, but this year we'll wash them sign them it's gonna be great um i'm looking forward to getting my hands on a hat um i know uh i know the store has uh, has soaked up a lot of uh, specialty merchandise this week and uh boy it's it's gonna be pretty cool i'm looking forward to these specialty jerseys you can uh, see what they look like on our social media channels and uh look forward to seeing a seeing a big crowd this weekend yeah and that's this weekend of course we've got games between now and then and and if you want to see Rowansi Contreras that's tomorrow night uh, so there's a lot of good baseball activity there in Altoona this week yeah looking forward to a great week against Harrisburg and you know hopefully the curve can come away with a series win and you know stick around the top of the Southwest Division standings there's John Moses with us this morning John enjoy the rest of your week Thank you. Talk to you soon. All right. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 
1160. We talk with the Altoona Curve on Mondays all this season. 21 and almost 22 minutes after 9 o'clock. Two minutes after.